Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the particle clone operator, new in Moto 16.1. I'm actually pretty excited about this one. It's a lot like a replicator, but it's a lot more flexible. Now, it's not as fast as a replicator, but it's way more flexible. So I'm going to show you how that works and why it's better than a replicator in some instances. And if you're not familiar with um, a replicator in Moto, I'm just going to show you how that's set up real quick. And you, you probably are, but just generally speaking, a replicator takes a prototype. In this case, it's going to be my thing right here. And it also takes a point source. In this case, I've got a plane with some vertices on it. You can see the vertices there. And it replicates that mesh to all the vertices, right? And so it can even replicate multiple meshes to all the vertices. And there you go. That's how a replicator works. Super easy, super fast, super efficient. They're great, but they're not super flexible. For instance, if I've got uh, my little guy here, let me just highlight him again. It has a morph map on it, right? So this little balloon thing pops up. That's the morph. Now, if I right click and add a morph, create a morph influence, and so now it has that morph deformer in the scene. And let's take a look at the replicator. That morph is propagated to all the different replicas. And if I, you know, select the strength and channel hall, you know, it goes up and down on all the replicas. But what if I only want it on some replicas? That's where it starts to fall apart. So if I add a radial fall off to this, now I've got one in the scene already, so I'll just double click that. And I've got my radio fall off here, which I'll turn on. Now, if I move my radio fall off away from that prototype that's right in the center, I'm going to lose my morph on everything, right? So here's my prototype. And so this is being replicated wherever this replicator is. And I'm, I'm sorry, wherever this fall off is, whatever the effect is on this one single prototype here, that's what's being replicated. I can't affect that morph on different portions of the replicated meshes, but you can with the particle clone operator. So let's set one of those up and look at the difference. So I'm actually going to delete this morph and you can actually leave it on. It works both ways, but I think it's actually a bit faster to do it the way I'm about to show you. So I'm going to delete the morph and I'm going to press in for a new mesh item. And I'm just going to call this cloned or something along those lines. I can hide my fall off for now. And I'm going to add the particle clone operator to this one. So we'll just type in particle clone, whoops, particle clone right here. Double click that, and you see it here in the mesh op stack. So this operates a lot like a replicator. We pick our point source, so that's right here in the tool pipe. So particle source, and we will pick our plane just like last time. And for sources, these are the meshes. I'm going to pick um, my thing mesh again. And you can have multiple sources just like you can with. Uh, like just like you can with the replicator and there you go so let me hide <clears throat> the thing here you can see it replicated now let's add a morph uh deformer but instead of adding it to the source the prototype essentially i'm going to add it to this stack because all the vertices are are live they're not just replicated sort of instanced versions of them they're actual vertices they contain the morph information the uv information the weight maps on the original match and so I can just add a morph deformer to the stack. If I can type uh, morph influence. So I'm going to add that. And then I'm going to pick my morph, which it, it just auto selected right there. So again, if I change this to like, you know, 50%, it'll all go down. 100%, they're all up. But if I add the fall off, again, we'll just use the radio fall off, you'll see that that's now live across all of these guys. So you can add deformers, you can clone and sort of replicate your mesh like you can before, but you can use fall offs now on different deformers, whether it's morphs or other deformers, and you can do a lot more. So let's say I wanna do a little bit more with this. Let me just move this over here, and maybe, maybe I'll make this, um, maybe I'll just make this bigger just for just for example here. So I'll just kind of go like this so we get a nice little gradient of morphing there. And I'll hide it. And then let's add some more operators on here. So let's create some polygon selection sets to do something interesting. So I'm going to come over here to add operator. I'm going to assign a selection set. And we'll just call this selection set, make it a polygon selection set. We'll call it blue because I'm going to use this to change some of the red balloons to blue which again is really difficult with a with a replicator to have that sort of control. You have to sort of sort out different particles and do some stuff like that. Uh, there is a video on Pixel Fondue that will show you how to do that if you're interested. But what's really cool is I can go to 
add selection, and add a selection operator, select by previous operation. So I can use the select by previous operation, pick the particle clone operator as the previous operation, and it'll let me pick whichever clone I want. So I can say clone number seven is going to get this selection set. And so I come over here to stats, and I look at the polygon selection set, and I see the blue one here, and I click on it. There it is. That guy, had, that's number seven, is going to get that selection set. And I can even duplicate this guy and maybe add it to one more. So I'm just going to control D duplicate and pick like number 16. Why not? And instead of override, I'm going to say add. So this time I'm adding to the selection set. And so if I go over here to stats and again, click blue, I see it on a couple, right? Looks good. Okay. So how do we make those blue in the shader tree? So let's go over to the shader tree. I'm going to add a group. In this group, I'm going to mask on, instead of a material, a selection set, I'm gonna pick my blue selection set, right? And then my red balloon material here is assigned to this red balloon material. Now keep in mind, if I just, in my blue here, if I add like a material, it's gonna override everything because the selection set's not just applied to the balloon, it's applied to all of the polygons and there's multiple materials in here. So what I wanna do is inside that selection set, I'm gonna filter down even further. And I'm just gonna duplicate my balloon material, put it in here, and I'm gonna make this one blue. So what's happening here is go, we're just crawling up the shader tree from bottom to top, right? And so it's assigning the metals, the end cap and side arms and stuff like that. Now it assigns the red to everything. And it comes up here and it starts on the outside first. It looks at the selection set, which is all the polygons here. And then it goes down one more level and filters again to just the polygons with the red balloon material on them. And then it applies that blue material to those. So again, you can go in there and, and just you know pick different materials and assign selection sets and things like that and use it um, to give your, your cloned uh, prototypes different uh, materials. So that's, again, hard to do with a replicator. But I can go further if I want. I can, uh, let's say, add a push operator. Okay, let's say push. And in this case, I'm going to select by selection set. So we're going to push these two blue ones, right? So add selection. And we'll do select by selection set. And we'll use our blue selection set, right? Now, I can also do a select by previous here if I want to. But I'm just going to work on these two blue ones. And so if I do a push here and say 0.05 or so, it's going to push every polygon again in that selection set out. Let's say I just want the balloon. So I'm going to do kind of like something I did in the shader tree. I'm just going to filter down one more time. I'm going to do another selection operator. And I'm going to select by a polygon tag. And this polygon tag will be a material tag. And I'm going to select by the red balloon material. Now I know we turned it blue, but remember in our original prototype, that material, that polygon tag, material tag is called red balloon. So I select that. And now it's going with all the balloons because remember our blend mode is just override. So we don't want to override it. We actually want to set that to multiply. And so one way to think of it is when I set the selection set to blue, it gave all the polygons with a blue selection set, so sort of a value of one selected, right? Any other polygon is a value of zero. And with the polygon you know, material tag, the red balloon, it's giving all of those a value of one instead of zero. By setting it to multiply, I get one times the one that's also in the selection set, and that makes it one, which is selected. And it'll go zero against all of these guys that are not in that selection set, so unselected, right? So you're just kind of doing it like you would in the shader tree, but you're doing it with selection operators. And there you go. You've got like stuff that's quite frankly impossible to do with a replicator. I've got a variable morph uh, by using a fall off going across all these guys. And that's all animatable and everything else. I've also managed to go in there and change some materials and also add another um, operator on their post sort of replication, which is pretty interesting. Now, the only downside is it's slow. It's, it's, it's pretty slow because it's dealing, it's just sort of crunching all these things together and dealing them with them um, as one big mass of polygons. But it's a solution for those times when you need one, when you need to be able to clone meshes and then have access to changing their materials on various uh, cloned meshes or adding more deformers or more modeling operations to your various clone meshes. Uh, it's super powerful. And so hopefully we can make it a little bit faster 
in the next version, but it's here now and it works and it's gonna be useful. Yum, yum.